Hey, you're listening to a Bible Bro Down minicast, and as promised, we're going to talk about Romans 7, 9 through 12. Um, yeah, uh, I'll go ahead and read it, and then Billy, I'll let you jump in and kind of explain what's going on. Verse 9, I was once alive apart from the law, but when the commandment came, sin became alive and I died. And this commandment, which was to result in life, proved to result in death for me. For sin, taking an opportunity through the commandment, deceived me, and through it killed me. So then the law is holy, and the commandment is holy and righteous and good. The Billy, the the thing that confuses me here, the commandment and the law seem to be different. And apparently the commandment was supposed to result in life, but that conflicts with what I thought Galatians 3.21 said. It's, it says that, Is the law then contrary to the promises of God? May it never be. For if a law had been given which was able to impart life, then righteousness would indeed have been based on a law. How is this commandment supposed to bring life when he says that the, there's no law that can bring life? This is the same author. Mm-hmm. What's going on here? Um, yeah, this first let's talk about what this can't be. <laughs> I think that's a good, okay. right? So oftentimes people think that um, this commandment is referring back to the previous verses about, about the, the commandment of thou shalt not covet. Uh, and if, if that's the case, it, 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 like you said, it seems... It seems that this law and this commandment are two different things because the law itself is holy, but the commandment, this commandment that is is in, to bring life, is holy, righteous, and good. So these two things have to be different. So this this commandment can't be coveting because coveting is part of the law, and and they would all be the same thing. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah, I think I, I think I'm following. Right. So and and can Matt can do you know of anywhere in scripture where it says that if if you don't covet, then you'll to have eternal life? Yeah. <laughs> no, I don't. That's not a that's not a thing. And and I think about Romans three that nobody is justified by works of the law. So even if you manage to not covet your whole life, that did that's right. not enough. So yeah. um, is there anything in your mind, uh, any command of God that if you were to obey it, uh, would result in life? Uh, are you asking me, the character who's confused right now? No, I'm not. The... You can. <laughs> <laughs> I could be me. How do you receive uh, eternal yeah, life? Definitely. What do you obey? Uh, you call on the name of the Lord for salvation. You, you obey what Romans 10 quotes, which is in Deuteronomy 30, the the command to choose life or choose death. Right. right. I think mean, that's that's it. The gospel message, right? Uh-huh. That you know, those who don't obey the gospel will be judged and condemned and, and receive the second death, and those who obey the gospel will receive eternal life. This is the commandment that brings life. So uh, when Paul says that I was once alive apart from the law, but when the commandment came, uh, sin became alive and I died. So uh, before coming to understand good and evil, before coming to um, discern right and wrong, sin and death, uh, good and evil, being able to refuse those things, having mental cognizance, mental uh, culpability, uh, I think that's the right word, um, before that you are considered alive to God, alive to the Lord. He looks upon you as not someone who is in a strained relationship. Um, he, he has provided, uh, he's already provided redemption for, for all of mankind and those who, uh, children who are, again, we, we see this as a, a young Saul, uh, a child Saul. Um, uh, that young Saul, uh, you know, the three-year-old Saul would have been considered alive to God. He would have, if he, if he would have died, he would have um, been given eternal life. He was alive to the Lord, right? He was under the inheritance. But when this commandment came, uh, when he came to understand right and wrong, he came, came to understand the law that had been written on his heart and his, and his accountability to that law, uh, sin became alive. He recognized his failures in these things, and he died. And I just had this story. Um, I was going through um, one of our uh, group members, Irenic Pelagian. He was on a Google Hangout for Bible Thumbing Wingnuts, and he was talking about about children, really, and, and and whether or not they're considered sinless or or whatever. And Irenic, you know, like us, doesn't think children are, are invent sin, right? Uh, sin is to miss the mark. Sin is to uh, sin is to transgress the law. And these these people that he was in this group with. Uh, we're trying to equate sinlessness with perfection. Can you be sinless but not perfect? Well, if the sin isn't counted against you, then yes, you can you can be looked at as sinless. Now you can still be disobedient, <laughs> but if it's not being credited against you, then yeah, you'd be um, in right standing at that point. Let me let me give you a, a example I gave and see if it fits. Maybe it doesn't. Um, can something that's alive? 
so this doesn't necessarily have to be human, um, <laughs> be sinless and uh, not perfect. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, I've got I've got one very smart dog, and then and I've got an idiot. There you cow go, dog. Right? <laughs> Your dogs? Do they yeah. know the law? <laughs> right? <laughs> uh, some of them, and she still violates those. You know, so you know what I mean? She, like, do they, yeah. they do they understand? You know, if an animal, a wild animal, were to kill a human. They have not transgressed any kind of law. They have not sinned. But if now, if you were to give that that animal a conscience, the ability to discern between good and evil, right, and a conscience, and then they did it, now they've transgressed against the law. Now they've sinned. The same thing with a child. A child doesn't comprehend good and evil. They can't refuse evil or choose good, according to Isaiah. Um, so they can't. They're they're not considered uh, sinful creatures. That they haven't transgressed any law. So they're considered alive to God. Right, and this is simply this is based on God's nature. Right. He, he, they aren't. This isn't some, uh, you know, just natural law that God God can't apply this stuff to them. He's just gracious to them because of their ignorance. This is something He has allowed. Uh, so, <laughs> be be careful of youth throws dilemma here. God isn't. There's no like higher standard, and God's like, I can't punish these kids even though I want to because they're bad. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> he he is. He recognizes if they don't understand. This doesn't go. This isn't just for kids, really. If you have a family member or a friend who who ha, is has some kind of mental disability where they didn't progress beyond kind of a, a young child mentally, it would absolutely apply to them too. If they can't understand good and evil, then God has shown that He is not going to hold their sins against them because where there is no law, there is no accounting for sin, and that person isn't capable of comprehending the law. Right. Yeah, that's that's kind of the the main point of this of this is it goes back to Deuteronomy one where where the children who who yet could not discern between good and evil were were and God didn't discipline them and they inherited the promises they inherited the land they they entered the rest of God because of their inability to to know the law and comprehend the law and and either follow the law or not follow the law again this doesn't mean that a, a child isn't doing actions that an adult moral accountable creature would would look at as sin like a two-year-old can lie right that's an we, action we both have kids right that's we an know. action that we would consider a sin right but yes. do, does this two-year-old understand mentally accountability moral accountability that this is a transgression against god and that they deserve death no, they have, they have not reached that stage yet, which is why the Lord, you know, can justly uh, credit them uh, with with uh, being alive and being uh, being His children, and uh, uh, credit them if they were to die with righteousness. and And that child still needs Christ, Matt. Why? Well, they're still born with the repercussions of Adam's sin in place. That now they're not guilty of Adam's sin. They're right. not born like hated by God, but the curse is still there. They are born dying, and they are born separated from the eternal life that they could have had had Adam not fallen. Right, and they're so still in a bondage to Christ. physical death. Right, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. They, yeah. they don't have access to eternal life. They're they're in a cursed world that still needs redemption, and God has has it looks upon them as having uh, been reconciled in essence. Right, that if they were to die, they are they they've been reconciled because of Christ. He it's only through Christ that He can reconcile the world. Christ is the one that purchased it. He's the one that offers it to people, and he gives it freely to all people. <clears throat> so let me see if I can summarize what you're saying so far. Uh, Paul was a child, and he he was alive, spiritually alive, because of his ignorance, apart from the commandment. He hasn't, he hasn't comprehended it yet. And then he receives this commandment, which you're saying is the gospel, a uh, gospel command to, to trust the Lord, to choose life. Uh, he, he comprehends it. He reaches an age where he can understand the need to do that. And he becomes accountable for it. And until he does that, he is spiritually dead. He dies. Uh, sounds a lot like the prodigal son right now. Um, so help me, f show me where the, the command, because I still, like, it says that there's no law that can bring life, but you're saying there's a command. And like, so it's, show me, help clarify where we can see that the, there is a command that brings life. Right. There is a word that brings life. We're going to, we're going to, if we, if you turn to Romans chapter 10. Uh, starting in verse 5, uh, this is Paul speaking of uh, this long discourse, really, from 5 through about 18. Uh, and in it, he quotes from Deuteronomy and from Isaiah and from Psalms. Uh, 
And he says initially, he says, For Moses writes that the man who practices the righteousness which is based on law shall live by that righteousness. But the righteousness based on faith speaks as follows. So in, in, in just this, these two one and a half verses, we have the two paths, Matt. Righteousness, yeah. which is based on the law, and righteousness based on faith. So walking by the law and flesh, or walking by the spirit and faith, right? Right. That's that's the two that's the two options right here. And and so he says that the righteousness based on faith, which we know that righteousness from faith is the gospel message that I can God says you know I have uh, freedom to offer you. I have um, freedom from your bondage, freedom from sin, freedom from death. Righteousness that I want to give you. This is the good news. You are not stuck in your in your sin, in your death, in your bondage. I have righteousness to give you. That's the gospel message. You know, it's it goes against or is in opposition to the good news. The bad the the, the, bad, the bad news is, is that your sin, you're in bondage to death. The good news is, is that God offers it freely to you. How do you receive that? The righteousness based on faith speaks as follows. So and then Paul goes in quotes from Deuteronomy chapter 30 in this righteousness that's based on faith. So whatever he's quoting from is the same message that is righteousness based on faith. So if you do what Paul is quoting from by faith, you will receive righteousness by faith. You will be obeying the gospel. And what does he quote, Matt, from what, what Deuteronomy passage does he quote from? Yeah, he's quoting from Deuteronomy 30, and I do not have that passage up at the moment. So. <laughs> <laughs> I will get there, unless you have it already. It's Deuteronomy um, 30, verses 11 to 14. But he specifically starts um, in verse 12. But what right, I want you to yeah. do, because this is, again, speaking of this commandment that can bring life, right? I actually want you to read this in context. So start with verse 11 and read ver verse 14 if you can. You know, 14 or you want me to go through 16? Whatever one you want. Start with 11. Though. Okay. Uh, start with 11. For this commandment, which I command you today, is not too difficult. So this is, this is God, by the way, speaking to Israel. For this commandment which I command you today is not too difficult for you, nor is it out of reach. It's not in heaven that you should say, who will go up to heaven for us to get it for us and make us hear it, that we may observe it. Nor is it beyond the sea that you should say, who will cross the sea for us to go uh, to get it for us and make us hear it so that we may observe it. But the word is very near you, in your mouth and in your heart, that you may observe it. Verse 15. See, I have set before you today life and prosperity, death and adversity. And then I command you today to love the Lord your God to walk in his ways and to keep his commandments and his statutes and his judgment that you may live, multiply, and that the Lord, uh, your God may bless you in the land you are entering to possess it. So again, it sounds like if you're just reading this, it sounds like he's talking just to Israel, but Paul pulled this and he's, he is specifically saying this is about righteousness from faith. Yeah, this is, this is the same command that they were to obey by faith that would have been given them that, that they would have received righteousness by faith, right? Because this is a righteousness based on faith speaks as follows. And he quotes from this chapter. And then at, right at the end of this, he says, right at the end of this quote, he says, that is what I just wrote to you. What, what's quoted way back in Deuteronomy 30, the Lord wrote is the word of faith we are preaching. <laughs> so the same word of faith, the same gospel message that Paul preached, which is the gospel that, you know, righteousness comes by faith, by walking with the Lord, by trusting in him, by loving him, by listening to him, his voice and doing what he says. This is the gospel message. This is the same message that God spoke uh, to Moses and to Israel. And and notice again this commandment. This this commandment which I command you today is not too difficult for you, nor it is that, nor is it out of reach. And what does he say at the end of that little excerpt there? Uh, the word is near you. The word of this commandment is near you, in your mouth and in your heart. So this is something that God has personally placed within all men, so that they can know Him, they can know His law, they can turn to Him, and they can walk by faith. So Pause right there. Yep. Hold on. James twenty one or James one. <laughs> James twenty one. James one twenty one. Therefore, putting aside all filthiness and all that remains of wickedness and humility, receive the word implanted, which is able to save your souls. James and Paul aren't arguing with each other. There's one word that can save your souls. And as you read and just now, that is the word of faith, which we are preaching. Uh, it's near you. It's in your heart. It, and it's talking about righteousness by faith. What What is the word that's in your, that, that can save you that James is talking about and that Paul is talking about? Choose life or choose death. It's right there in your heart. It's on yep. your mouth. As James says, it's been implanted in you. Uh, Christ, or Paul says, you know, quotes from Deuteronomy saying it's in your heart. The Lord speaks of this in just earlier in chapter 30, uh, where he's he's kind of going through this idea again. He says, you know, the blessing and the curse which I've set before you, and, and you return them to your heart. 
So they were already in your heart. You've uh, left me, and you need to return them to your heart and return to the Lord and listen to his voice. And listen to listen to his voice. It says in, in verse uh, verse 2 and 3, I've set them before you, and you return them to your heart. Again, where, where is the word? It's in your heart. In all the nations where the Lord has, has uh, banished you. And you return to the Lord your God and listen to his voice with all your heart and soul, according to that I've commanded you today. Then the Lord your God will restore you from captivity and have have compassion on you. That's that's the the gospel message right there. Is that you've got life and death before you, the blessing, the curse. This commandment of of following the Lord, listening to His voice, and and how is this uh, a fleshly obedience of, of the flesh that we're supposed to do? No, as as Paul says, this was something. This was a righteousness that was by faith. They were to obey this commandment by faith. They were to love God and and love people. Um, out of faith and out of faithfulness to the Lord, out of love for the Lord. And if they did that, they would live. They would be restored from captivity, i.e. bondage, and the Lord would have compassion on them. He would show grace to them. And uh, do we see, so this concept, Matt, in, 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 in this commandment that Paul speaks of in chapter 7, that he, he, he quotes and, 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 and talks about in chapter 10, he also quotes from another passage uh, later on in, in, in Romans 10, uh, where he taught, well, first of all, in Deuteronomy, he says, you know, I've set before you uh, life and death. I call heaven and earth as a witness against you. Why is, why is heaven and earth a witness against, against Israel, uh, this life and death thing? Why, why are they a witness? Well, Paul alludes to this and, and actually delves into this, this witness of heaven and earth later on in chapter 10. Yeah, he, he goes on to talk about how, how, um, Great are the feet of those who bring good news. You know, how, how will we know unless someone preaches to us, etc.? Uh, this is a common verse people use, and they always stop at 17 and don't do that. Stop at 18 because he says, Who has heard, or have they not heard the word that he's talking about, this word of faith? Uh, have they not heard? Indeed, they have. Uh, the, his, their voice goes out into all the world. He's quoting Psalm 19 there, and, he, and Psalm 19 is, uh, I'll, I'll read a, the first couple of verses and then I'll jump down. Um, the heavens are telling of the glory of God and their expanse is declaring the work of his hands. Sounds a lot like uh, Romans 1, right? Uh, that in what has been made, we can see his divine attributes and his nature. Um, it's been clearly seen. He's made it evident to us that he is speaking through nature and using it as a witness for himself. It's, it's interesting, though. You, you continue on in Psalm 19, past where it's talking about the heavens declaring his righteousness or his glory. And you see in chapter uh, in verse 7. The law of the Lord is perfect, restoring the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. The precepts of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The commandment of the Lord is pure, enlightening the eyes. Fear of the Lord is clean, enduring forever. Huh, the commandment of the Lord is pure, enlightening the eyes. I mean, there's so much that comes to mind here. I think of uh, John 1, that the uh, the the word was in the world, enlightening men, mm-hmm. <laughs> right? Uh, the command is, it, it, Deuteronomy says, the command is in you, it's in your heart and in your mouth. Yeah, that's it's very good point. Again, John one nine that the word uh, was in the world enlightening every man. Well, what was he enlightening him with? The, the the commandment of the Lord that if they were to trust in Him and walk by faith, that they would be saved. The same commandment that mm-hmm. uh, is that Paul speaks of just a few verses earlier in Romans ten that he quotes from from Deuteronomy thirty. This commandment, this gospel message, that if you walk uh, in the Lord by faith. It is the light of life. It is the, the, the commandment that can result in life. That if you were to walk by faith and trust in the Lord, you will be, you will inherit the promises. You will be, you will receive eternal life. Yep. So to, to summarize, Romans 7, 9 through 12. I was once alive apart from the law, but then the commandment came. Sin became alive and I died. This is Paul as a child. He was spiritually alive. He, he, he understood the need to fall on the grace of God, to submit to him, to call on the name of the Lord for salvation. And he didn't do it. And he spiritually died. He was separate from the Father for a time. And this commandment, which was a result in life because it is the command of the gospel, it is the, the uh, as we explained in, uh, I think, during Romans 6, that the, the gospel is that there is, the good news is that there is salvation apart from works of the law. It's, it's now available through faith. What do we need to do? How is that? How do we participate in that? We call on his name for salvation. We trust him. That, that's the commandment. Choose life. Trust, trust him. Uh, seek him, and then how is why is this even possible? Because of Christ and the work that He did. So all based on Christ. Um, but this commandment, choose life, trust Him, is to result in life. That's the only commandment <laughs> that is possible to to produce life in someone. Yeah, in verse ten where it says, "In this commandment, which was result in life, proved to result in death." So really, if you were to say this correctly, proved by my disobedience to the commandment resulted in death. So instead of choosing life. 
and 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 walking by faith, I, I chose death by disobeying yeah. the commandment. Uh, going back to Romans one, you got you know get to that age of understanding, right? The age of accountability, uh, where you understand this commandment, you understand sin, righteousness, judgment, that you need to walk by faith. Uh, and instead of following that commandment, instead of obeying that commandment, you suppress the truth in unrighteousness, and yeah. that results in death. Yeah, sin, the flesh takes an opportunity when you receive that commandment to deceive you and kill you. Right. And so then, then that's why the go ahead. <laughs> Verse 12, that's yep. why you see the distinction between the law being holy, but the commandment being holy, righteous, and good. He didn't do that by accident. The law is holy. It was from God. It was meant to to be a tutor for the Israel to trust him. Um, but the commandment, the thing that can bring life, the thing that it, it, when by obeying it, you're participating in the gospel, that is holy, righteous, and good. Right, because that commandment, the commandment of the gospel, is the only thing that can bring righteousness Right, as Romans one says, Romans one sixteen seventeen, for in it, in it, in the gospel, the righteousness of God is manifest. That's right. All right, I think we've uh, summarized that quite well. Uh, hopefully, people get it and and it gives you some clarification. Uh, this this uh, goes along with like the prodigal son. You know, I was alive apart from the law. I died when I disobeyed. The prodigal son was alive. You know, when he was with his father, he he left his father, squandered his inheritance. He suppressed the truth and the righteousness trusted himself he quote unquote died he was died to died to his father and then when it says he returned he came to his senses he returned and, and walked by faith uh, you know humbled himself and went back to his father he was quote unquote alive again absolutely <laughs> um so if you have any questions about that you want to push back on on how we described those verses email us bible at gmail.com hit us up on the facebook group bible rowdown uh you can also uh, email us through the website bible rowdown.com uh, but either way happy to hear from you uh i think that's it yep till next time god bless